I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here inside the Hub Culture Studio, part of the Hub Culture Campus. We have one of our neighbors who'd stopped by. How are you? I'm doing very well. Alan Ransell, team lead for Filecoin Green. Have I got that right? Exactly. Okay. So, one of the things that has been um, bubbling around uh, in the kind of news universe in the last couple of years is the fact that cryptocurrencies, some, not all, um, there are environmental concerns about how they are mined. Uh, Bitcoin is the sort of famous one that people talk about. And I know that um, innovation is means that in some, cur some currencies, some coins, it's less of an issue. Just give me your kind of big picture on that and, and how you fit in. Yeah, so we certainly believe that we need to reduce our, envi our environmental impacts as quickly as possible. If you look mm -hmm. at the IPCC report, you mm -hmm. know, we need to reduce uh, emissions across the globe by 43% by 2030, which, mm -hmm. which is a huge, huge undertaking. And, um, you know, we see our role in that, in Falcon Green especially, mm -hmm. as allowing people to get the data that they need in order to see their environmental footprint in a really detailed way hmm. and be able to make the decisions that they can in order to reduce that footprint and also not have all of that reside just at the end of the supply chain, right? It's not just, just the end user who are making those decisions. What does that mean, not have it reside at the end of the supply chain? So we, we want to give anyone at any point in the supply chain the mm. ability to see what their impacts are, what okay. the options that they have are for reducing those impacts, and then to be able to prove that they're reducing those impacts and mitigating those impacts hmm. if they can't reduce them. Interesting. So is this like, if we t talk about the kind of scope one, two, and three yeah, of emissions, so it's actually the scope three emissions, which is the toughest part to tackle exactly. that you're working at, and just jargon bust scope three for me. Yeah, so, so scope one is the emissions from fuel, say, that you burn on site. Yep. Scope two is emissions from electricity. Mm -hmm. And scope three is the emissions from everything that you consume upstream in your supply chain. So fascinating. So you guys are working on the toughest problem to solve. So tell me a little bit more about how it works. Yes. Yeah, so, so Filecoin is a decentralized storage network. So you're allowed to pay people to store your data in Filecoin. Mm -hmm. And if you're a client storing data, you know which storage provider on the network is storing that data. Hmm. And so what we're doing is allowing storage providers to prove how much energy they're using and if they're buying renewable energy to be able to prove that. So if you're storing data on Filecoin, you can go and look up the storage provider, you can see the energy use profile, and you can download renewable energy certificates showing that, say, your data is being stored using energy from this particular solar farm over mm -hmm. this particular period of time. Fascinating. And so that's, that's scope two emissions for the storage provider themselves, uh -huh. but then it ends up being scope three emissions for the, the client storing data. Extraordinary. So how do you see the, the future of what you're doing fitting into uh, the us fighting the biggest problem that we actually have to face at the moment, which is tackling climate change. Right. So, so if you think for for um, about scope three emissions, and that you just mm -hmm. said is the hardest problem to solve, because you need to understand how these impacts flow from company to company or person to person throughout mm -hmm. a supply chain. One of the main problems with that is currently that's solved through auditing that is extremely labor, labor intensive yeah. and extremely expensive. And long. And, and yeah, exactly. And as a result, so it, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so. Um, the, the SEC is, has proposed uh -huh. to require all publicly traded U.S. companies to make environmental reports every, every year, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's that yearly cadence that, um, while this is a good step, right, um, if we rely on everyone in the supply chain only to report every year, then it's going to take years, right, for that data to travel yeah. through that supply chain. And so if we need to decarbonize by 43% across the world in eight years, mm -hmm. we need to allow that data to travel through supply chains in minutes, not in months. And so by using the verifiability and interoperability that you get, by um, tying that to crypto solutions, right, mm -hmm. by trying to get people to... Um, be able to, to not just make these claims, but prove that the claim I'm, I'm making to you mm -hmm. about my scope two emissions, your scope three emissions is, is actually correct. accurate. Mm -hmm. That's what we see as, as really key for driving that information through these supply chains and allowing us to decarbonize more quickly. Wow, absolutely fascinating. Alan, thank you very much for stopping by the studio to tell us a bit about your work. We'll keep talking. Thank you so much. All right, I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.